I'm Katie Parla, and today we're going to be making gatto di patate from my book Food of the Italian Islands. Gatto di patate is a mashed potato cake, for lack of a better translation. It's from the Neapolitan metropolitan area and archipelago, and it might seem weird that in Capri, Procida, and Ischia, they eat mashed potato cake stuffed with cubes of ham and cheese. Well, you better believe it. I know it's tempting to think that every island culture sits around twirling spaghetti with clams all day long. Before these places were touristic destinations, they had to raise and cultivate what could easily be stored in order to survive. Potatoes are a very good calorie source, and once they're harvested, they could be cellared and used for really hearty and extremely delicious dishes like this one. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing today is making mashed potatoes and then layering it so the filling will have uh, this really savory smoky cheese, smoked provolone, which if you're lucky, you can get in its whole form. Um, and I'll add like a savory grating of Parmigiano Reggiano. You could also use Pecorino Romano or even Grana Padano. And that's gonna make the filling alongside cubed ham. And to further enrich the flavor and calories, there are some breadcrumbs in the mix. The casserole is gonna be filled with breadcrumbs first. Then I'm gonna layer the potatoes with the filling, another layer of breadcrumbs, and we've got a party. All right, let's make some room so I can start prepping the ingredients. Okay, first, I'm just gonna cube this ham. This is in Italy called prosciutto cotto, and I want these cubes to be nice and chewy and springy. And this is just a, I would say a fairly lean cut. You could use something fattier if you want, dealer's choice. Uh, if you're buying this outside of Italy, then you might just find it called ham. I wouldn't get anything with like honey and if you're using smoked provola, then I wouldn't get smoked ham either. We're just gonna cube all this up into pieces that are more or less this size. Yeah, that's the right size. Oh, also super important, taste all your ingredients as you cook with them. That way you know how to season as you go. There's gonna be salt in like so many elements of this because you've got the ham, you got the cheeses, the potato water is gonna be salted. You just wanna be aware of how savory the final dish is gonna be. So that's gonna make a nice substantial filling. All right, so this is provola o fumicata, smoked provolone. It's really springy. It's got a really smoky flavor. And when it's dried, they hang it like this, which is why there's this like actually slightly troubling looking hangman's knot on it. Um, and just gonna cut it into cubes. But remember the golden rule. You always have to taste your ingredients as you go. So this has a smokiness that penetrates from the skin, which is a slightly different texture into the center, which is nice and soft. It tastes good. We can use it. And I'm aiming for pieces that are about the same size as the ham chunks. Napoli is just an hour train ride south of Rome, but it is a world away. And when we're thinking about the Italian islands, Ponza, which is off the coast of Lazio, might be a part of the region that Rome's the capital of, but it's really influenced by the food of Napoli, because Naples was a very powerful kingdom during the period uh, in which the food cultures of these islands developed. And so I've got great news for you. If you go to Ponza, even though it's in this region, you might find some dishes like this that are typical of the Isole Italiane. So if you don't have access to smoked provolone, which every single deli in my neighborhood has, um, you can just use another melty, soft provola. There's like a little bit of semantic difficulty that comes with the way Italian cheeses are labeled abroad. This is provola fumicata. If you ask for that in a deli somewhere else, you might get something that's a little bit harder. What I'm after is something that's very springy and very melty ideally will give you a nice cheese pull, not unlike the sort of filling of a, a Roman souple. Now it's time to grate the Parmesan. So Parmigiano Reggiano is my hard grating cheese of choice today, but you can use really any hard grating cheese that will bring a savory note is gonna work. But do grate it on the fine box grater, these punched out holes. I just like the, the fine powderiness of cheeses grated that way. 
Parmigiano Reggiano and other cheeses like it aren't going to give you that meltiness. So you don't need to grate them on the large holes. The powderiness is going to allow the pieces of Parmigiano to settle in all the nooks of the ham and provola. I easily could have gone to my local alimentari and had them grate it for me, but then there's no risk of grating off part of my knuckles, right? So this is a cow's milk cheese. If I was using Pecorino Romano, that would be a sheep's milk cheese. Um, they have really different flavors. Pecorino is definitely more savory. This one has a, a nutty flavor to it. Comes from the north. I mean, honestly, if I wanted to go real island vibes, I would have used Pecorino Romano because in spite of the name implying that it's a Roman product, 97% of it is produced on the island of Sardinia. One of the major features in the book. So once this is all done, we'll be ready to prep the potatoes. Okay, that's really hot. I mean, you do have to peel them when they're warm. Okay, so uh, this is basically just making mashed potatoes. Uh, these guys have been boiled Whoa, that's hot. Um, <laughs> basically until fork tender. So about 40 minutes in salted water. And then I'm just going to combine them with a bunch of cream and nutmeg and butter. So potatoes might not seem like the most classic Neapolitan ingredient. And remember that until 1861, Naples was under Spanish power. And so these tubers, which were imported from Peru and other parts of South America, were introduced to Spanish dominion in Southern Italy and the Iberian Peninsula. And when Neapolitans met potatoes, they became obsessed instantly, which I get, I mean, highly relatable. Potatoes are delicious, but they're also an important calorie source. And you find potatoes in all sorts of dishes. Some of my favorite, aside from the present one, potatoes with provola and pasta. So again, carbs on carbs. Can I make a suggestion? Next time you plan a trip to Southern Italy, if you think the Amalfi Coast is where it's at, just skip it. I mean, it's nice, I guess, but approach it is way cooler. And it's this island off the coast of Naples. Kind of feels like La Sanita, this like very gritty neighborhood, drifted off into the sea, detached from Napoli and is hanging out in the bay. It's kind of raucous and loud. The food's great. The beaches are volcanic sand. And if you want a little preview to see just how be beautiful it is, uh, check out Il Postino, because it was filmed there. So if I was being really particular, I would take out all the dark bits. Well, I guess I am at, at this point. So I'm a compulsive shopper and collector of kitchen tools, but I don't have a potato masher. So if anyone wants to send one as a tip, that's great. Um, so I'm just basically mushing these potatoes a little bit with a fork so that when I buzz them up, there's already a head start. I'm gonna use a immersion blender, but I want them to be a little mushed first. Oh, maybe that guy's not as fork tender as I wanted. That's okay. When you make mashed potatoes, you definitely want to get potatoes that are all more or less the same size, and that way they all cook to the same tenderness. There were some big guys in here that didn't cook quite as well. That's okay. All right, so now uh, I'm going to throw in some heavy cream. Ooh, that looks good. And a couple eggs. Ooh, that's a real orange yolk. And I'm going to do a little salt and a few grates, maybe more than a few grates of nutmeg. But this is whole nutmeg. I don't, I don't mess with that pre-grated stuff. That feels like the right amount of butter. All right. I'm just going to mash this a little bit. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Guys, I have to tell you something about the Italian language. It's beautiful. You know this. But it also has some absurd words. An immersion blender in Italian is mini pimera. Doesn't make sense to me either. But here we go. So I just want to I just want to buzz this up. Make it smooth. Okay, the mini peamer has done its job. And it's not super smooth, actually. Like, I don't mind some lumps, but 
do you? So now I've got this very thick, savory, and delicious potato puree. I know there are raw eggs in this, but I'm tasting it anyway. It needs more salt. So potatoes need a lot of salt to be really, really seasoned. So we're going to go in. Also, shout out to the Mercatino, which is like the consignment shop downstairs from my house that has the silliest things like this piggy salt container. One of my favorite kitchen tools. And once I've tasted this for salt, we'll be ready to build our gato. Better. I'm just buttering this pan because I want as many carbs in this as possible. So the butter is going to cause the breadcrumbs to attach and that's gonna make a little crust. Not too thick, very subtle. So just gonna make sure that I get the breadcrumbs all over the bottom and sides. And I'll save the rest for covering the gâteau. Now the potato puree is going in, only about half. Then I'll layer it with some of the filling, then finish it with another layer of potato. Oh, that looks good. Very nice. Oh, big chunk of prosciutto cotto. Oh, that's so nice. So this is a very dusty flurry of Parmigiano. Looks amazing. It's settling into all the little nooks between the ham and the provola. Oh yeah. This is such a delicious idea. I'm so happy Neapolitans thought of this. Penultimate part, some breadcrumbs. I wouldn't use seasoned breadcrumbs, you know, like the Progresso ones or whatever that you buy at the store. Just like a little bit too much garlic flavor going on. Um, these are just plain. So on top of this, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter. Last step, I'm just gonna put little pets. Little is not the right word to describe that size. I'm just gonna put little chunks of butter. And it's ready for the oven. That is beautiful. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah. Oops. Bro, that was really good. Thank you, Prochita. Amazing. So, still got the crispiness of the top. The inside is super soft. Got the melted cheese, combined with the ham seasoned with the Parmigiano Reggiano. I wish it was winter time, but I'm still enjoying this. This is so good. I do enjoy eating it off of a plate, but I have to be honest, my favorite method is out of a Tupperware container on the beach in Prochita. So hopefully you can have that experience too. But either way, start now by making gatto di patate from Food of the Italian Islands. Recipes below. Like and subscribe. Ciao.